Okay, let's just do my sound check. All right, thank you. All right, so there's a little bit of a delay. Um, I just wanted to make sure everything was up and running. If you can't tell, which you might be able to tell, I have very bold aspirations today. Um, I also have, I have some very bold aspirations today, not only in skincare, but also technologically. So I'm gonna try something. I don't know if it's ever been done before. And then I'm going to like blow up the world. Let's do this. So I was like, you know what? I did uh, Instagram live, which was extremely fun. And I love these YouTube lives. And I was like, you know what? Why can't, why not just do both at the same time? Right? Mind blown. Uh, so let's pioneer this. Okay. That's not awkward at all. Nah. Okay. Too much next time. All right, all right, all right. So anyway, to what we're doing today, get my fan on me. So someone brought it to my attention. They were like, if you could talk about um, lipophilic or like how oil dissolves oil. I can't remember the verbiage. I know she's in the chat because I saw her name. But the uh, the point of this, we actually, I take this for granted. We talk, I talk about this all the time. Like salicylic acid dissolves oil. These things like vitamin C can't get into the skin because... Uh, is water soluble. So I have some things and some props for us today. And we're going to look at this together. Um, I'm going to use the good stuff. So for our oil, we have one of my favorites, Biosant Squalane Oil. For our water soluble material, we have our, like a really good vitamin C. This is the Skin, Skin Diva's vitamin C plus ferulic acid and vitamin E. I'm making great sacrifices of products I love. And then we're going to use water-soluble food, food dye. And so the reason this is so important, and we'll use vitamin C as our example, is there are so many reasons ingredients can't penetrate our skin and don't work. And it involves all of the barriers of our skin. The basement membrane has heparin, which is charged. So if something carries a positive or negative charge, it's also going to be um, prohibited from getting to the deeper layers of our skin. We also have a lot of natural oils that we make like we make squalene which is thanks, a derivative which is like a foundational component before you make squalane and we also make triglycerides normal cholesterols that all protect our skin and because of that it keeps things out so let's just look at what this actually how this actually works so this is a glass of water so i'm going to be looking at my screen a lot today and this is just to prove that our food coloring is water soluble. Oh, I have something to protect me. Where is it? There it is. All right. I pretty much decided that any day I can bust an apron out is a good day. Like, no question. Scrubs are expensive, so I'm going to protect them. All right. Um, so water. And so let's say that this is going to be our ingredient, our active ingredient. I'm going to add just simply one drop in here. And you can see very beautifully how it disperses how it spreads, and it doesn't take much. Swishing it around, now all of this, oh Lord, I'm gonna drop it on the floor. All of this is red, like through and through, all of this is red. And so water dissolves into water, right? Simple concept. But now we have this problem of our barrier and our lipids in our skin. So here comes my beautiful squalane oil. Oh, RIP. And so let's say that, for example, let's say this is the squalene or triglycerides or anything that our skin makes to protect our skin barrier, keep our barrier intact, moist. Now, I'm going to use the same dye that we know is water soluble because it dissolves in water. And I'm just going to add one, maybe two drops. And that's pretty good. Look, you can see how 
separate it still is. I mean, it, it's lipid is holding on to lipid. It doesn't want to mix. And so what this really shows you is that if you're going to put on something water soluble onto the skin, you have your uh, oils and a lot our natural oils on top of the skin. These water ingredients are just going to sit together, clump. Sorry, these water soluble ingredients are going to sit together, clump together, and not only are they not going to penetrate, but even if they wanted to dissolve through that oils through the oils in the top layer of our skin, like look at that, they're still clumped together, holding together. Let's see if I can make it a little more visible to everybody without ruining. I cannot. So. But again, see, water just does not dissolve in oil. And then to the same effect, here we have vitamin C with E. And vitamin E is actually an oily compound, so it's not perfect. I don't have, I don't have a pure vitamin C serum with me. But this is a pretty watery composition like a lot of serums. And in the same way, I'll add a couple drops here or one drop is probably enough. So again, you can see it just spreading out. So this is just my vitamin C serum, which is usually water soluble. I mean, not almost always water soluble mixed with the water soluble thing. So vitamin C just as one of the many water-based ingredients is gonna have a hard time not only penetrating the top layer of the skin and then having its active effects, um, but it also works in the opposite way. So when we're trying to remove oils from our skin, whether it be just because we have really oily complexions or whether it's because we're wearing a lot of makeup or like mineral based, like the really thick sunscreen, the same rule applies. And that, that oil, like we saw and see in this one, that oil just wants to stay on your skin. The water that you're using to wash off your face can't really get it off. In fact, you can see just it's so separate that the oil went down here, the water soluble dye is staying up here. They're staying completely separate. And so that's why we use things for double cleansing, like in oil. So you can use the oil to dissolve the oils on your skin or the oil-based material on your skin, and then rinse it off with things that help facilitate that like reaction. It's almost like how egg yolks work in cooking, how they emulsify things to make that condiment that I despise mayonnaise. Um, hashtag I love Miracle Whip. But these things like salicylic acid can help dissolve the oils on our skin, the oily products and ingredients, and then help them be removed more readily by the water, which is what we all finally rinse our face with. So that's kind of just the long and short of what it means to be hydrophilic or dissolve in water versus lipophilic and dissolve in fat and how that precludes things like vitamin C from effectively getting into our skin and how it also precludes us from rinsing off oils that are on our skin with just normal cleansers. But again, things like salicylic acid help. Things with uh, using an oil as your first rinse can help solubilize whatever oily stuff's on your skin before you rinse it off with the second wash. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to say there. Whew. What, Susan Ramos? Yeah, Miracle Whip. It's so much better than mayonnaise. It's like somewhat. <laughs> no, no, no. We're not going to go for it. No, that case closed. This is not like a Mayo Miracle Whip discussion. There's no question. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So that was point one, and that was fun. I, If I could cook, I would love to have a cooking show, but I love to eat, so I will just have an eating show. Now I'm going to move these so I don't spill them for the rest of this, the rest of this discussion. Okay. So anyway, that was, that was fun. I need more like this. I need more crafts in my life. It's very enjoyable. Even though I know, yes, I'm on record saying I don't love DIY skincare at home. It is fun when you're ready to burn some time and have fun. Okay. Um, Let's see, what else had I on the docket? And of course, I'm going to be getting to all those questions, all of the questions um, as well. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, all right, the other two things I'll make really quick because I don't want to just, I don't want to preclude your, um, I don't want to not get to your questions, but uh the first 
the thing I said about inflammation, so it's kind of a pet peeve of mine, actually. I realize this every now and then it comes back to my mind is that inflammation is not one thing. Inflammation is the endpoint of like everything. And inflammation is so complex. And let's just take two conditions that most people are familiar with. Um, eczema, atopic dermatitis, and psoriasis. Both are actually driven by inflammation. Like the cells in each condition signals inflammation that signals the condition. They are actually so different though that, and there are such different arms of our immune system that cause the inflammation that in atopic dermatitis or eczema, despite increased inflammation and immune cells always in the area causing skin damage, you actually have a decreased ability to fight infections. And that's not only because the skin barrier is disrupted, it's also because some of the cell signaling things that are upregulated actually stop you from effectively fighting bacteria and viruses and fungus. And then the opposite is psoriasis. Uh, psoriasis, when that immune system gets upregulated, that type of the immune system, you actually have a decreased risk of getting infections. You have more antibacterial, anti-yeast, antiviral things on your skin to protect you from infections. I don't know how I can convey this without pictures, but um, inflammation is actually one of the most incredible and intricate things of our bodies. And it's so diverse and so different. I just want to throw that out there because it's like not all the same, especially on TikTok. It's like, oh, this decreases inflammation. This decreases inflammation. This decreases inflammation. It's actually probably more important that we actually could decrease very select parts of our immune system and very select parts of inflammation than just like drinking um, green tea, which I'm a big fan of, but to just try to decrease inflammation overall, it's not that effective. And then the last thing is collagen. I was just like blown away just over the last two weeks about how much, how many of the ingredients and products we have are all are all used to target collagen in some way. And pretty much everything we use, like from sunscreen to protect collagen to our things that grow collagen, like our retinoids, niacinamide, and vitamin C. And I mean, I guess Bakuchi all falls into the same category to things that protect collagen. Also, I guess antioxidants protect collagen. They don't build collagen to things that can, um, I guess, I guess save our collagen from ourselves, like our geraline or, or Botox or whatever. And then every procedure out there imaginable to resurface, so exfoliate, peel. Uh, coll I just like give an appreciative state of collagen right now. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And I look under the mic microscope every single week, and I wish I could share more of what I see with everybody all the time. But um, a lot of what I see, and let me see if I can get a picture on camera and make it look okay. But I spend a lot of time looking at collagen that's just dead and destroyed from sun damage. And I'm like, I'm like, wow. So all of that, all of that pink stuff is called, actually your whole bodies are made of collagen first off. But all of that pink stuff that's deeper in there are, is a deeper collagen that really gives our skin the structure. And then all those purple gray violaceous things towards the top, not that purplish topest part, but that gray stuff in the middle, that's all destroyed really it's destroyed elastic fibers, but interspersed with that is destroyed collagen just from sun damage. So like, I mean, it's collagen appreciation week in my life. Um, if only because we just dedicate so much to it, it blows my mind. Okay, now, uh, now to you, now to you all. So let's see what is on your mind. That's what's been on my mind, but now let's see what's on your mind. All right. Um, <laughs> So this is an interesting, and I guess this is one of those things where uh, you need more information, but uh, someone says, my collagen is faulty due to connective tissue disorder. Uh, what are your experiences or thoughts on cosmetic procedures for people like me? 